All right, we'll continue with our uh, media availability availabilities. We're joined now by Chase Elliott, driver of the number nine Napa Auto Parts Chevrolet. Um, after a big win last weekend, it sounds like you've had a very busy week. It sounds like you went to the um, Lansing Grand River Assembly Plant to see where the Chevrolet Camaro DL1 is put together and spent some time with some employees. Can you talk about that and talk a little bit about what your week's been like? Yeah, it's been a been a real busy week for sure. Uh, but yeah, a lot of fun and, and a cool experience. You had to kind of see um, what you do when you win a race. So uh, that was nice. And, and uh, yeah, I had a chance to go to, to Lansing yesterday and uh, you know meet some of the folks that put together the Camaro and could see how that car is built and, and drive on off the uh, assembly line. So it was pretty neat and uh, enjoyed my time there and uh, looking forward to hopping in mine here very shortly. All right, we'll open it up to questions. Uh, raise your hand and we'll get a mic to you. We'll start right here in front with Nate and then we'll come to Bob. Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. I have two questions, Chase. The first is uh, three runner-up finishes here. And in 2016, I think you lost the lead both time on restarts. How much better, I mean, if you could rerun those races now, how much better do you think you would be in terms of being able to keep the lead on a restart like that? Yeah, I mean, I'd like to think I could change the result for sure. Um, but, you know, until you're in those positions, it's hard to, hard to know, you know, and some of them, some of it's circumstance too, you know, you could get a good restart and maybe not get a good push and the guy next to you does get a good push and, you know, lose the lead that way. But uh, I would like to think that I do a little better at it. But, uh, you know, until you're in those spots, you don't, you don't really know. Is, um, how well do you know Jim and are you interested in if, you know, developing a relationship with him if you don't know him very well yet? Yeah, I don't, I mean, I, I know him. I don't know him well. We're not best friends. I don't talk to him. Uh, during the week, but you know, we're, uh, yeah, I'm open to getting to know him better. You know, I think, um, he's got a lot of history in the sport and I don't see him, uh, you know, doing anything wrong. All right. We'll come to Bob and then we'll go back to right here in the green shirt and then Matt Weaver, Bob Packers, ESPN on his podcast, Dale jr. Came up with a nickname for you. Uh, he said young Elvis because he said you look kind of like Elvis and you know, the hope is that you would become the Elvis of NASCAR. Do you like that nickname, or should Dale Jr. retire from giving drivers nicknames? <laughs> I think he needs to retire from giving nicknames. Yeah, for some reason, he's always thought I look like Elvis, and I really don't know why. I know he has a little bit of an obsession for Elvis. He's got an Elvis room in his house, which is kind of weird. Um, I've, I've been in that room before, and you wake up, and there's this Elvis man staring at you so i don't know if he just has a thing for elvis or uh or what but yeah i don't i mean whatever but i don't uh i don't think he's qualified chase we're coming right over here <clears throat> yeah chase Roy Akers, detroit sports media uh, with your win last week i noticed a lot of the younger drivers were in the top 10 eric jones i think there were a couple more maybe ryan blaney you know there used to be a lot of guys that didn't drive in these you know, in the, uh, I don't know what you want to call them, the, the Grand Prix style races. But now you guys, are you want it? Or are you going to start seeing a lot more of the drivers be all around, you know, the younger guys instead of get subbed out for the, like, Sonoma and and so forth? Um, I mean, I, I feel like it's kind of been that way for, for a little while. I mean, your regular guys that, you know, win the ovals tend to have done better at the road courses over the past handful of years. I mean, I don't think that's a... I don't think that's a new thing. Um, why that is, I'm not sure. Um, I think a lot of the guys that came in that were road racers that just came in to do it every now and then were always very open and kind to lend their advice. And I just wonder if, you know, the guys at Oval Race haven't learned a lot of those little tips and tricks and have been, you know, better for it. So, uh, yeah, I don't, think that's, I don't think that's a new thing. You know, I mean, Martin has won, uh, you know, won Watkins Glen, won Sonoma, and, uh you know, Kyle and Brad and all those guys that went at Ovals too or, or have been really good at road courses. So I don't think that's a surprise. All right, we'll go right here to Matt and then we'll go back to the back to Wolfgang and then over to Brian Nelson. It's Matt Weaver, Auto Week. I've got the Wolfgang two-parter for you. Um, a lot has been made over the years of how you've handled um, the adversity when you come up short, the things that you've said publicly. In hindsight, do you think you've handled that sort of pressure well? And the second part, do you think the pressure ramps up now that you've won, or does the edge go away? Um, I mean, yeah, I feel like, I mean, look, I've, I deal with things the way I think is right. So whether that's good or bad, that's not, you know, 
for y'all to decide as for me to decide. And I think I've dealt with things fine. So, um, you have to believe in what you do and, and how you go about things. So I, I feel like I've approached things well. Have I been perfect? No. Could I have done a better job? Yes. You know, I think the days that you have more control over the result are the days I'm more frustrated, you know, and I've expressed that, you know, you guys know that. So, um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't change anything. You know, obviously I'd love to have reversed a few of those finishes over the past couple of years, but really, you know, it makes you appreciate them a heck of a lot more. I know I, I appreciated, you know, this past weekend more because of my past couple of seasons than I would have if we had come here and won, you know, this race in 2016. And that's just facts, you know, whether you want to believe it or not, not to say I wouldn't have loved to have won that race in 16 or, or won a race in 16 or 17, but, um, that make you appreciate them more cause they're not easy to get, but as you move forward, they don't get any easier. So, um, I definitely feel a lot of relief to have finally won a race and after being so close so many times. So, um, I certainly feel like I have some more confidence that, that I haven't had, you know, leading into a race weekend, which is nice. And that doesn't mean things are going to get any easier, but I think that, um, you know, just a lot of relief from myself and my team. So I, I I'm excited to see where we, where we go moving forward, whether it gets better or worse. I don't know, but I feel good about it. And yeah, you know, that's all that matters. All right. We'll go back to the back to Wolfgang, then over to Brian Nelson and then Chris Knight. Uh, Chase, I just heard your father will drive again Elkhart Lakes Xfinity race. Can you give some more details and did you speak about him and maybe asking you for advice concerning the latest NASCAR technology maybe? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was really just a casual conversation I was having with Mike Beam and, uh, you know, the race was open and I was like, man, you ought to put, ought to put dad in the car, you know, that weekend and kind of push for it. And he was open to it and, uh, you know, dad was open to doing it. So I think he just wants to go have fun. You know, it's not a... It's not an easy thing to do to jump, you know, jump in uh, to a race, you know, when you haven't haven't raced an Xfinity car or a Cup car in, in quite a while. So I think he just wants to go have fun and see, you know, how the how the cars are different nowadays from what they what they were uh, a handful of years ago, and, and just go have fun. I, I mean, he still enjoys racing and he hasn't forgot how to drive. I don't think so. I think he'll be um, I think he'll be in good shape and have fun with it. That's the main thing. He's got nothing to prove, so um, he'll he'll have a good time. We'll go to Brian and then up to Chris Knight. Brian Nelson, Motor Racing Network. Chase, now that you are absolutely locked in to the playoffs, how does the next few weeks, you know, the strategy, the approach change, especially considering that the track styles at Indy, Bristol, and, and here at MIS, they're, they're not really going to be replicated during the playoffs. So has anything changed? What's your approach going forward for this next few weeks? Yeah, I mean, certainly it can – probably use a little more offense than than uh than what you would have if you if you weren't locked in so that's so nice i mean i've been on the other end of the stick the past two years and um such a nice feeling to come into these last few races and know that know that you're locked into the deal but I, I think more than that playoff points are still really important to get and i think that's our goal try to get as many of those as we can uh whether it be winning stages or trying to put yourself in a position to win obviously you're always trying to win but um those stage victories are big and you can rack up those those playoff points uh quickly you know that i know it's only one you know per stage but uh they add up you know so i think that's our goal these next few weeks is just try to get some get some more playoff points and kind of get to that next tier of of guys in the points and people are going to be racing against in the final 10. okay we'll come up front to chris knight chris knight catch uh chase your mom said uh on Monday that uh, it didn't matter that she wasn't there for your first win. Now it mattered that your dad was there for her, uh, your first win. But I want to know what was that moment like when you got off the plane in Dawsonville and saw your mom and had that moment with your mom. And then uh, as a follow-up, you said that you wanted to go to Road America with your dad, but, you, but I was it's an off weekend for Cup. So do you have plans or are you going to try to go to Road America and be there for him? Uh, yeah, I'm planning on going. Uh, I definitely want to go up there for, for the race and, and hang out and watch and, and enjoy the weekend. I think it's going to be a really, really cool thing to watch and be a part of. So uh, excited to go up there um, and, and spectate. Maybe they'll let me spot or something. I don't know. It might be kind of cool. But, um, yeah, it was great to see my mom. I wish you know I wish she had been there. She doesn't miss many races and has obviously been uh, been there, you know, throughout the whole journey to – to this point so it'd been nice to to have had her there and and to uh to you know have some photos and and things with her at, at track but um uh, but it was great to see her when we got home and and uh enjoyed a good week you know with uh with her too so uh yeah i wish she was there but 
unfortunately didn't didn't work out. Any additional questions for Chase? Nate? When you won your first Xfinity race, you also won the following week. So are you a believer in history repeating itself? Do you think that could happen this week? Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, this has been a this has been a pretty good track for us in general. And that's not to say this weekend will go good. I, I felt like we were better here, uh, you know, my first two years than we were in the spring race this this year, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I hope that I hope this weekend goes good, and and um, I think this weekend will be kind of a good gauge as to where we stack up for some of these race tracks uh, that that are coming up. You know, here in Indy and. And uh, not so much Darlington, but kind of here in Indy and Vegas and some of the some of the mile and a half, two milers coming up. So uh, we didn't stack up very well here in the in the spring race. I, I think we've gotten a little better at these style tracks since then. Um, so hopefully, yeah, we'll see. All right, Chase. Well, thank you. Thanks for your time. Congrats on the big win and good luck in Sunday's Consumers thank Energy you. 400.